we are at the second segment of the structure chapter and the last segment I stopped at the syncline and I have started to tell you that the syncline is opposite of the anticline so instead of up arching this is down arching I should almost show it like I can it's like this right there so that's a down arching fall it looks like this and you can see on this picture right here or on this one right there and if you play the slideshow this is an animated picture so it will exactly show how the the forces acting toward each other and the end result is a down arching fold or syncline this kind of you can kind of see it when you have a syncline you can see that if you stretch this back the the syncline will have the youngest layer which is that in the middle when you have the strike and strip direction strike and uh, dip direction on a geologic map actually if this hit is the axis the dip directions are going to point toward each other so if you have a syncline the strike and dip directions are, uh, are going toward each other the dip direction so this is going to be showing you a syncline this here is just about completely an, uh, symmetrical syncline and remember when the axial plane actually divides the syncline into two uh, very similar part that is what we call symmetrical syncline of course there is a lot of times when the syncline is not completely symmetrical but because of from one side the forces are stronger you're gonna have almost a syncline like this so this is asymmetrical and it would be the same with the the, the uh, anticline action and I'm gonna go back just for one sec and if we're talking about anticline you know this is a symmetrical one but if from one side the pressure was bigger this is gonna be an asymmetrical anticline just like that and it could be completely overfolded actually like this so these are the differences so it's the same with the syncline this slide also just shows syncline and it also shows amazing differential weathering as you can see this layer must be a very strong very durable quartz sandstone and in the middle you might have clay and the clay always weathers easier than the quartz sandstone so differential weathering some layers are sticking out where others are uh, completely weathered away okay so what is this what do you think You're right, it is a syncline. You can clearly see that it's a down arching. Actually, it's a symmetrical syncline. And like right on this slide, you can see that usually the syncline and anticline goes hand in hand. So you will find them together. So this one is what? Yes, it's an asymmetrical anticline, both of them. And this is an asymmetrical syncline. So that's easy. And now we are at the brittle deformation. You know, we talked about folds, which is when the rocks are ductile. That means that it's happening pretty deep down. The temperature is high enough that the rocks are ductile, which means you can bend them. Uh, in this case, now we are going to talk about brittle deformation. That is when the rocks are rigid, they cold, like they, they are close to the surface where the temperature is very low. Uh, we have two kinds, one is the joints and the other one is the faults. And both are relative le result of, of very fast stress usually. Uh, like if you make a modeling clay, it, it will break if you, if you apply the stress very rapidly, but will bend if the stress applied slowly. The first one we have to talk about is the joints. And the joints are fracture surfaces along which there has been a displacement. Like the one of the best example, like what you see the Devil's Marble, you know, the Devil's Tower, which is a basalt volcano. And but when the basalt cools down, it will uh, form these very, very characteristic joints. And when you, like these joints will fall apart on the long term. And when you hit them, they are going to make absolutely natural, fantastic cobblestones. Like in Hungary, we have a lot of uh, cobblestone made from basalt. We call them basalt organs. There is a whole lot of beautiful um, examples for this in Hungary. And actually, 
if you go in this country, if you go to uh, Washington, between Washington and Oregon, there is the Columbia River Gorge. And along the Columbia River, you don't see anything but these basalt organs or basalt joints. So it's very, very, very characteristic. And I mentioned it to you at the time when we were talking about the basalt. And now we are at the faults. And the faults are actually basically fractures along which there has been a movement or displacement. Uh, if you look at either side of the fault line, you will have different kind of rocks. We classify the, we class, classify the, the faults based on the type of movement, which direction and how did it move, uh, and the orientation of the fault surface and the angle of the fracture. So this is the fault terminology. First of all, we got the fault plane, which is right here. And if you look at it from the side, you can see that that looks just like one line going through the rocks. And then uh, one block, this, this fault plane divides the whole uh, rock as a unit into two places. One is the so-called foot wall, and the other one is the so-called hanging wall. To decide which one is the foot wall, which one is the hanging wall, if you make an imaginary horizontal line and you look at below that line you will see that the fault line divides the the area into two angles you know like the fault line uh, and the horizontal plane will make two angles one is the acute angle that's the acute angle and the other one is the obtuse angle the acute angle side is always gonna be on the hanging wall side. So this here is the hanging wall, hanging. It says somewhere on the picture itself. So the hanging wall, I just put W. And this here is the foot wall. So it's easy to re realize which one is which. Because whenever you have the fault line itself, you put the imaginary horizontal plane, you look at below this plane, and the fault line makes two angles. One is going to be uh, acute amb angle and the other one is obtuse. And you can see on the left side of my hand now is the acute angle and that is going to be the hanging wall. And the obtuse angle side is going to be the foot wall. So it's easy to, to recognize. The next thing we have to do is just decide which way the hanging wall went. If for that, you have to find a rock layer. I'm going to change the color of my pen here so you're not going to get uh, confused. So we can pick this layer right here. See, it's now doing red. And this is exactly the same layer on the other side of the, of the fault line. So what you can see that this is the hanging wall and this layer actually went down on the hang hanging wall. It could have gone up, but this one has gone down. And this is the type of fault we are going to talk about just now. So we're talking about the normal fault. When you look at the, let's say this is the surface and this is the fault line. And now you can tell which one is the hanging wall, which one is the foot wall. You see. Remember, you look at the angles underneath of the surface. You can put that imaginary horizontal plane anywhere. So, obviously, this here is the acute angle, so that's the hanging wall. It's that simple. I just put hang, and that's the foot. So, the next thing we have to do is to find a layer which you can clearly see on both sides. So, here we are, and here is the same layer on the hanging wall. So, which way did it go? Yeah, you're right, it went down. So, this is what we call normal fault. Now, the other way to recognize normal fault, that when you have normal fault, remember that means it's a relative lengthening, a divergent plate boundary, so you have tension of force. So what happens here, uh, the amount of lengthening is shown by the missing layer. So you can see that on this side, this is the same layer as this, the layer here on, this, on the other side. But there is this area here, right here, this one, where the layer is actually missing. And that is showing you clear that there is lengthening here 
and it's a divergent plate boundary which means this is a normal fault so you don't necessarily have to deal with the foot wall hanging wall however that's a possibility also if you realize that there is missing the layer you pick to see what's happening with it on on the hanging wall side if there is any missing part of that layer you know it's a normal fault this slide just shows you that when a normal fault happens, that just means that on one side you'll have a mountain and on the other side you're going to have a valley. And just this is the, the way where it shows you how the weathering will happen on, on a normal fault such as this. When you have two facing each other normal fault, that's going to make the so-called Grayburn fault. So here, here is one normal fault and this is the other. And when it moves down, it's going to make the gray band fault. You will see on the slide it's an animated one, so you will be able to see how it happens. On the other hand, when you have a reverse fault, this is what happens. So here is the surface. That's the fault line. So which one is the hanging wall here? Yes, yeah, so this here is the acutangle. So this is the hanging wall. And that's the foot wall. F and W. And now I'm going to have to um, find a layer right here, let's say. And you can see that on the foot wall it moves up. So see here is our layer. And you can see because we know this is the hanging wall and the hanging wall relative to the foot wall moved up. So this is what we call reverse fault. And you, you will be able to see this is an animated figure here, so you, you're going to be able to see it. Now, the other way to see that it's a reverse fault, actually, that you can see that the, the layer you chose repeats each other above on top of each other. And that is the amount of shortening here. So anytime you see stuff like this, where the, the same layer repeats each other on top of each other, that is going to tell you the amount of relative shortening and you will know that it's a reverse fault. Now, when you have two facing each other reverse fault, what happen, What will happen is that this middle part is going to come up and we call it horsed fault. Horsed fault. The last type of fault we have to talk about is the so-called strike-slip fault. When you have a strike-slip fault, you actually have to fly over it. That's the way you're going to see it. And like, as you can see, this here is a strike slip fault. And what happened, there is a, a, a movement along the fault uh, and it's a horizontal movement. So we don't have any vertical movement. And to be able to tell what kind of a strike slip fault it is, you have to stand on one block and see which way the other one went. And the best way is that you pick out some feature, like let's say this white layer and see which way it went on the other side. And in this case, it went to the left. So this here is a left lateral strike slip fault. Left lateral, left lateral strike slip fault. It's just strike slip fault. Now, on the other hand, if the block is going like this, this block goes that way, and this other way here, one here goes this way. The way you tell it is that you're standing on this block, and you look at which way the other one, and you can see the other one is going to the right. So this here is a right lateral strike slip fault. Right lateral strike slip fault. So it's pretty simple. After this all together, we have the three kinds of fault, the normal fault, that's when the hanging wall goes down, relative lengthening, and you will see missing black, missing area in a layer. The other one is the reverse fault. That's when the hanging wall goes up and you have repeat in the layers. And the third one is the strike slip fault. And this is the case when the blocks just sliding next to each other just like that. Now we're going to have a bunch of slides showing different structural elements and I kind of want you to tell me what it is. I will wait with each of them. So here is the first one. What is this? 
yeah it's just a simple band like monocline right here how about this one yeah this here is a low anticline syncline anticline syncline other anticline so it's a fold this happened deep down but the temperature is high the rocks are ductile what is this one you're right syncline this one and decline yes overturn and decline as you can see yes overturn syncline that is very interesting here you have like overturn mountain with an overturned syncline and decline and probably a fault line right here. Yeah, it's very interesting. Okay, what is this? Yeah, we're looking at it this from the side. So as you can see, this here is a fault line. And to figure out which one is the hanging wall, which one is the foot wall, we put the imaginary horizontal and we look at the angles below and as you can see this here is the acute angles this here is the hanging uh, hanging wall I put H and W and this one is the foot wall so the next thing we do is pick out the layer so let's put, pick this one right here which is the same as this so which way did it go on the hanging one yeah you're right it went down so this is a typical normal fall Now this one, on the other hand, is a typical reverse fault. We don't really have to worry much about what is what, but you can see this is the layer, and this is the layer, and there is a big overhang. So this is a typical reverse fault. And this one too, of course. It went on top of each other. Reverse fault. Now, what is this one? Yeah, if that's what you said, this is two facing each other normal fall. You can see that's the hanging wall, hanging wall, and this layer went down. Same here, this layer went down. So it's a graben fault, graben fault. This one, as you can see, this is a series of regular normal faults because this here is the acute angle hanging wall foot wall hanging wall foot wall and the hanging wall went down so it's typical normal fault this one is pretty hard it's a reverse fault how about this one yeah, you're right, we're flying over it. So this here is a typical strike, slip, fault. Which kind? We're standing on this block right here, looking at which way the river goes, and it goes to the right. So it's right lateral strike, slip, fault. Now be careful, it's again side view. So if we put the horizontal plane, this is hanging, and that's foot. So... Which way did the hanging wall go? If we pick this layer, hanging wall went up. So this is a reverse fault. What is that? Yeah, you're right. It's anticline and syncline. Very pretty. Same here. Look how beautiful. See, the, the structure makes earth as beautiful as, as it is. Without these things, you wouldn't see this beautiful scenery. Same here. What is that? You're right. It's a strike slip fault. Right there is the fault line. And uh, the fault on this side went to the left. So it's a left lateral strike slip fault. What is this? You're right. It's an anticline. But it's a syncline. A little bit overturn asymmetrical yeah it's a syncline 
And this here is San Andreas. So the question is, what kind is San Andreas fault? It's a strike slippy, right? And what way it goes? If you're standing on this block, this one is going to the right. So it's a the right lateral strike slip fault. And that's the end of the structure slideshow. I hope you didn't mind it. And I'll see you in the next one.